do I have any justification whatsoever for being unforgiving toward anyone, no matter what they've done to me? How can I be unforgiving toward someone? Well, now watch this. When God has already forgiven me, and secondly, if they're another Christian, that's another Christian, he's already forgiven them. If he has forgiven them, how can I not forgive them? It absolutely set me free. How can I hold something against someone when God doesn't? If someone is not a Christian, it is vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay, says the Lord. You know what? Why should, I, why should I be angry and let this poison seep into my life and destroy me when God says, leave them to me? I'll take care of them if it's an, if it's an unsaved person, if it's somebody who's doing wicked and they're ungodly. God says, I'll handle it. Don't you try to handle it. Let me handle that. Don't let sin creep into your life and linger and destroy and poison your whole system, cheating you out of, out of the understanding of love and the expressions of contentment and joy and peace and happiness in your life. Don't allow yourself to be cheated out of all that because of what they... I, I will deal with them. You see, the truth is you and I can't justify an unforgiving spirit. And therefore, if I'm going to be forgiving, I've got to deal with my anger. You cannot be angry and resentful and hostile and bitter and at the same time be forgiving. They just don't work. So if, I want, if I'm going to be forgiving, I've got to deal with my anger. I've got to acknowledge what it is. What is the source? You say, well, I've acknowledged what it is. I've acknowledged the source, and they are the source, and they are the reason, they are the cause. All this hurt, all this pain, all this suffering, all this loss, it's their fault. And you know what? You and God can both say, right. But what is your responsibility? One thing. Forgiveness. You have to lay it down. You have to say, Lord, thank you for your forgiveness toward me. Thank you that you loved me enough that you forgave me of all my sin. And God, you know I'm going to be, I'm weak and I'm afraid I'm going to sin again and, you, and my, your forgiveness is there. How can I hold an unforgiving spirit toward someone else no matter what they've done? When my heavenly Father's forgiveness is abundant overflowing, adequate, sufficient, saving, and eternal. Cannot justify it. If you're going to deal with anger, you've got to be forgiving. The other thing I would simply say is this, and that is, learn to identify, watch this now, learn to identify those things that frequently tick you off, cause you to be angry. It may be something that happens real often. It may be something that happens once a month. It may be something that happens on your job very often. You sort of know it's coming. Or it's just one of those areas of your life, that's one area, become sensitive to it. Remember what he said? Quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. So what do we do? We ask the Holy Spirit. You see, here's one of our assets. We have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. He says the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. We have the power on the inside of us in the person of the Holy Spirit to enable you and me, no matter what we face, to respond in a godly fashion. I may hurt, I may feel the pain, I may get angry for the moment, but to recognize Father Enable me to respond to this in the, in the proper fashion. Don't let me respond, God, in an ungodly fashion. We have him to enable us, to strengthen us, to help us through these difficult times, no matter what may be going on, no matter what we may feel. Now, if I develop that kind of alertness to what's going on, then I'm going to be able to handle those things that would cause me to be angry. Now, let me ask you a question. You've never, you've never trusted Jesus as your Savior. You may be angry at God, angry at the church, angry at some pastor, angry at some other Christian, your employer, your friends, your enemies, whoever it might be. Well, let me ask you a question. Think about this for a moment. Let's suppose that you're angry at somebody who doesn't even know that you're angry toward them. They've never done anything. You just think they have. 
Do you see how foolish it is for you to be hurting and the suffering and the poison of anger and bitterness to be flowing through your whole system, affecting your whole body physiologically as well as emotionally, mentally, spiritually? They don't even know it. They're totally immune to the whole idea. And here you are suffering over something that's a misunderstanding. It's not worth it. It's not worth it when you can lay it down. He says, he says, put it aside. If anger could not be put aside, the Apostle Paul would never have said, lay it down, put it aside. What does he mean? Face it, identify it, bring it before God, confess it, repent, repent of it before him, forgive the person that wronged you. If it's a circumstance that you can't put a, a, a person's name on, then tell God you acknowledge that he's in control, that he allowed that for some reason in your life, and whatever it is, you accept his reason, though you may never understand. You just want to be right with him. And you know what will happen? You'll be free. You'll sense a joy and a peace and a happiness and a tranquility and a contentment in your life that you can't explain. And you know what happens? It'll make it very difficult for somebody to make you angry. You say, well, do you ever get angry? Yes, I do. But friend, I make it very brief because I don't want any poison to flow through my system any longer than it takes me to talk to God about it and to deal with it. He has given every single believer the capacity to deal with anger instantly when it hits us. And listen carefully. That is not to say that there will not be tragedies that are so awesome in our thinking that clouds our mind for a season of time until we can begin to think properly. But I do believe that no matter how deep it may be and how hurt the painful it may be, the capacity to get our focus upon our Lord and not upon somebody else is, listen, it's not only possible, it is the way God intends for us to deal with anger. I plead with you in Jesus' name, do not let it linger any longer. Don't let it seethe and just slip out and passively, aggressively, continually express it upon people that you may get by with it as far as they're concerned, but not with God, and most of all, not with your own body and your own life. God offers a gift of peace, contentment, and joy, but on to those who will willing to come to him and ask for it and accept it. And Father, how grateful we are for your wonderful love for us, Deliver every single one of us from any anger, bitterness, hostility, resentment. Give us the courage to face whatever circumstance or whoever to ask to make things right in order that your Holy Spirit can rule and reign in our hearts and the wonderful joy and peace and contentment and happiness that you have for us, we can enjoy every day. I pray the Holy Spirit will speak to someone who is unsaved and help them to understand until they're willing to deal with their sin problem, nothing else is going to work out right. Grant them the courage to do just what you said. Before the sun sets today, let there be peace where there has been pain. In Jesus' name, amen.